Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And I am your host, Gwen Harris. My guest today, John Kalibas, is one of Hawaii's premier bassists, who is also known as an educator and composer. John graduated from Punahou School, where he played in the, in the school orchestra, jazz band, and Hawaiian ensemble. My guest became a professional musician in 1979, the year he graduated from high school. In, re in relocating to New York City, John performed in musical theater, musical theater shows on tour and on Broadway. He also studied bass with Homer Mench, Mench at the Juilliard School of Music. In 1997, he successfully auditioned with the Hawaii Symphony in which he has performed to, to present. In 2001, John formed the critically acclaimed Honolulu Jazz Quartet, which he recorded three albums and currently performs on Oahu. In his jazz career, John has also had the privilege of performing with jazz giants, including Herb Ellis, Defile Marcellus, George Benson, Nestor Torres, Eric Marenthal, Don Krusen, Conran Hurry, Larry Correll, and many others. Please let's welcome our guest, Mr. John Kalivas. Welcome, John. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. You know, I've seen you around town, and like I spoke earlier, I met you last year at the Nahuku Awards. Right. We were sitting at the same table yeah. with Kiahi. So mm -hmm. that was where I, that was my first um, meeting you. Yeah. And then, of course, you know how Facebook is now. I do the friend request, so I became friends on, on Facebook. But I'm just so thankful that you are here today. You come from a musical family. Your mother was a classical piano teacher, and your father was a jazz saxophonist. How was it growing up in a musical family? Well, uh, my mother was constantly playing music, playing mm -hmm. her, her piano. She was teaching. People would come over to the house for lessons, although she did teach at Punahou and other places. And uh, so that was my, my influence as far as hearing music a lot. Um, she and my father actually divorced when I was quite young, so I didn't mm -hmm. really know him that well. But um, I always heard my mother practicing, and then I, I kind of had an ear for music, so I would go to the piano and start playing some of the things that she was doing, you know, by ear. Wow. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Now, what age, what age did you start playing music? Say that again? What age did you start oh. playing music? Uh, who knows? It was very young. Very young? Yeah, because we always had music in the house with the piano. And then my mother, I don't know, maybe I was seven, six or seven years old, she bought me um, different instruments because she knew I loved music. Mm -hmm. So she, she started with the harmonica. Oh, wow. I played around with that. And she got me some conga drums, some mm -hmm. bongos, <laughs> um, guitar. Um, and it was later that I. I got into the base. Nice. Now, you graduated from Puno in 1979, and you became a professional musician shortly after gradu graduating. So what was your first gig or your first job, as they say? Yeah, well, while I was in high school, I used to play jazz with, with the Choi brothers, David and Junior Choi. Um, that was in high school. And we would do a lot of weddings really for fun. But my first professional gig was uh, in 79, I believe, was at the Diamond Head Theater. Back then it was called the uh, Honolulu Community Theater. Mm -hmm. And that was a show called Pippin. And the conductor was Donald Yap, who was a friend of my mother's. In fact, she uh, got me to audition for Donald. <laughs> and so that was my first professional show that I played uh, at the theater. And it, was, it was a lot of fun, and I've been close friends with Donald uh, even up to now. Really? Nice. Now, at 21, you moved to New York City, so that must have been, that must have been a, an eye-opener, moving from Hawaii to New York City. Mm -hmm. But you moved to New York City, where you played on and off Broadway, playing the Pirates of Penzance, Tap Dance Kid, and Big River. You worked with many great artists and actors, such as Miles Davis, Gregory Hines, Maurice Hines. So tell us about working on Broadway. And then tell us also um, about Mr. Working with the Great or meeting the Great Miles Davis. <laughs> yeah. Well, the story is 
Kind of interesting, because I, I moved to New York City in uh, the fall of 1982. Mm -hmm. And um, I had actually played the show Annie, the show Annie, oh, okay. um, before I moved to New York. And the conductor, his name was Milton Green. He was an old timer from Broadway, and he was on tour with the show. And when they came to Hawaii, they used me to play on the bass. And so he told me, I told him I was going to move to New York. So he said, oh, I know all the Broadway show contractors. Just uh, tell them that you know me and that I recommend you. I said, oh, wow, thank you. That would be great. So that's what I did. So the first week I was in New York, I joined the local 802 in New York City. And they gave me the list of the contractors. I called each of them, and I said that I know Milton Green. And then one of them called me back. It was Earl Shindell was his name. And uh, he says, um, he says, oh, you know Milton Green, huh? I said, I said, yeah, we did a show together. He said, yeah, we go way back. Because Milton had conducted my um, Fiddler on the Roof, the original, oh. the original Fiddler on the Roof. So Earl Shindell said, and then he said, um, uh, he said, well, can you play? So I'm like, what do I say to that? <laughs> I said, yeah, I can play. This is on the phone. Mm -hmm. I can play. He says, no, can you play? <laughs> <laughs> so what am I supposed to say? I'm from Hawaii, but you know, you just got to do it. So I mm -hmm. said, yes, I can play. He said, okay, well, you have, uh, I have a, a show going out, Pirates of Penzance, on tour. And he said, um, uh, but you're new in town, so you have to audition for the, for the show with the conductor. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I did. I, he gave me the music. He said, do you play guitar? I said, no. <laughs> he said, will you learn to play guitar? <laughs> I said, why? He said, because there's one song, you have to play guitar. I said, okay. So he took me to Manny's Music on 48th Street. We bought a guitar. <laughs> he gave me, I got one lesson from this guy named Mike Gary, a mm -hmm. fine guitarist. Showed me how to play the song. And then we went on tour and I was playing upright bass, electric, and guitar on the show. Wow, so you, play, you played all those instruments I had in to, the yeah. show. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Now, we talked earlier about Miles Davis. And you told me that Miles Davis made the comment, bass sounds great. What was that? What was that? What was that circumstance? How did that come well, about? Yeah, I never actually got to play with him, but I was doing the workshop for the show Tap Dance Kid. Mm -hmm. And the workshop is, is supposed to get investors, you know, to invest in the show. And that was a great show. I had Alfonso Ribeiro, Hinton Battle. Um, but anyway, we did a workshop and Miles was there with Cicely Tyson. And the drummer was the famous uh, Grady Tate, great drummer. And so, you know, we're, we're playing, and I look out in the audience, and I said, man, that guy looks a lot like Miles Davis. <laughs> so, so during the break, Miles actually came up to, to Grady, Grady Tate, and I was standing there, standing next to Grady. And so Grady Tate says, hey, Miles, you're looking good, man. <laughs> and then Miles said, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and then he introduced me. He said, oh, this is John Kalibas, our bassist. And I got to shake his hand. He said, bass sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds just like that, him. That was 1983. Uh, I could have retired then. I was, so I knew, was you were on cloud nine with that, I was. You? Yeah, I was. It was such a privilege to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in Broadway. Or I should say you're in New York. And you're there for how many years? I lived there for eight years. Okay, and then you decide to come back to Hawaii. Yeah. Now yeah. you're back in Hawaii, and I see, I see you around town. Mm -hmm. You've played with the symphony, and you mm -hmm. play with the symphony, I should say. Mm -hmm. But this Honolulu Jazz Quartet, you're the founder of that. What made you want to start this group up, the Honolulu Jazz Quartet? Well, my mother... Uh, was a force of nature. Uh, <laughs> she passed away in 2008, but uh, back then, she, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of gigs going on in town at that moment, at the time. There wasn't a whole lot of things happening. And she said, you know, you should form your own group. I said, uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. She said, no, no, form your own group. Oh, okay. So um, I happened to, so I started to think about it, yeah. And so I met Dan Del Negro, our pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in town with Miss Saigon, the show. And I actually got called to do, do something because their bass player decided to take off. And so I did, I did a, 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 an event with, with the, those musicians. So I met Dan. 
And then, so I like dance playing, so I, I got him actually on a couple other gigs while he was in town. And then I also met drummer Richie Pratt, who mm. has spent a lot of time in New York. Um, he was an offensive lineman with the Giants. Oh, wow. And a great jazz drummer. I actually saw him play uh, with uh, Gregory Hines on Broadway when I first moved to New York. Anyway, so I met Richie, and then I said, yeah, let's get a quartet together. Um, and then I'm trying to think, well, who would be the horn player? Well, I thought uh, different guys, and I said, well, you know, I've known Tim Sukiyama because we played together in high school. Uh, for the State Select Jazz Orchestra with uh, Gabe Baltazar was the leader of it. Mm. So I met Tim and I said, yeah, I like Tim's playing. So we formed the quartet. And we got the name because Richie Pratt used to play for the New York Jazz Quartet. So I said, hey, how about the Honolulu Jazz Quartet? That's a good name. That's how we got the name. Nice. Now, how many CDs do you have? Do you have out? Well, we only have three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sounds of the City was our first one, Tenacity, and then we did a third one, which was a live CD that we did in San, uh, Seattle. Oh, so everyone, this is Tenacity. This is, which, which number is this one? <clears throat> That's the second one. This is the second one, okay. So this is the second CD by the Honolulu Jazz Quartet. He so graciously brought me one because I'm definitely going to put it in my car <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I leave here. You teach a workshop during the summer. Yeah, I read your bio. I read it very carefully because I wanted to get to know you. And this question is going to lead into a few other questions that I get into. But you teach a workshop during the summer at Punahou School that attracts students from around the world. Tell us about this workshop. Yeah, it was, it was actually a few years ago that I did the workshop. And there were, there were students that came from, I think it was Japan and some other places. And we had a nice, uh, I wanted to teach a jazz ensemble group, teach them a little bit about improvisation. And that's, you know, that's what I love. I love jazz. And so we uh, were able to do that with the group. And some, some great things came out of it, actually, Grant. Carvalho, who's a fine yes, pianist. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was, see him at Jazz Minds, and right. I see him around as well. Yeah, he was in the class. And Ryan, uh, who teaches um, at Moana Lua Middle School, mm -hmm. Ryan Howe. Okay. Um, so it, it, was, it bore some fruit. It was nice. But yeah, teaching is a good thing. Well, we have to go on a quick break. And when we come back, Mr. Calavis is going to play for us. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. We are here today with Mr. John Kalivas and we talked in the first half of the show, but the beginning of the second half of the show, we have a treat. He is going to be playing for us. So, John, I give it to you.
Awesome. Awesome. I feel like I'm in a club. I was just, you know, <laughs> just, just, just bouncing away like I'm, in, like I'm in a club. That was awesome, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, as soon as we get you back hooked up here, um, I want to find out where will you be playing? Where is the quartet going to be playing? Where can we see you around town? Well, we have uh, this coming Saturday, which is May. No, not this Saturday. Next week, Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's May 10th. We're going to be at a, a nice uh, jazz club called Medici's. Okay. And that's in Manoa. Manoa. Yeah, the Manoa Marketplace. And um, we're going to debut uh, some new arrangements. Oh, and nice. That's, we're really looking forward to it. It's a totally new thing for us. We all wrote some great arrangements. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so far it looks like we're booked at the Blue Note on June 21st. So we look forward to the Blue Note okay. uh, program. Okay. And then we also have one coming up at the uh, Manoa Valley Theater. See, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary. Uh, at the theater. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay. And so they asked several different uh, people over the months to play, and they asked my group as well. And so I need to just check the date real quick. Cause, awesome. Yeah, but that's going to be in August. So sense. you're going to be at Medici's, Mano um, the theater, the Manoa Theater, yeah, that's and from, yeah. Blue Note. Yeah, August 6th. Is August 6th at Manoa, Manoa Valley, Valley Theater. Yeah. Okay, and then you're going to be at Blue Note and Medici's. Okay, so my viewers, we have to check out Mr. Kalevis at these places. <laughs> We're going to get back to the interview because I have a few more questions for you. But before I ask you these questions right here, because, you know, I tend to veer off a little bit, but I have to ask you this. <clears throat> you went to Punahou. Mm -hmm. Now, you should already know the question I'm going to ask you. You <laughs> went to Punahou because I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know. You graduated in 1979 from Punahou. Yep. Did you know our former president? President Barack Obama. Barry? You mean Barry Obama? Barry? Oh, is that, is that what you called him, Barry? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was Barry to us. Yeah. Well, actually, I knew him from about the fifth grade. Oh. And when he first came. And so, yeah, we were, we were kind of buddies back in those days, you know. And, uh, yeah. Well, next time he comes, you need, to, you need to look him up. Well, we'll see. You know, he's, <laughs> he's got his regular guys he hangs out with. <laughs> But we, you, yeah. have to, you have to be a part of those regular guys. we, we got to give them the blue note. How about that? Okay. Get you playing at blue note. We'll Sounds get them at blue note. <laughs> now, let me ask you. I have a few more questions to ask you here. And this one I ask all of my guests just because I grew up playing music um, in the schools. And right now, they, you know, they're, taking, they're, they're gradually, slowly taking the arts out of the schools. So you teach an affiliated with a number of schools here on island, Punahou, Moana, Moana Loa Middle, and High School, and Iolani School. With some schools slowly taking music and the arts out of the schools, how can we keep music alive and in our schools today for our, for our children? What, can, what do you think can be done? That's a good question. You know, it, it's so important to have music. And I know some schools that don't have a, you know, a music program per mm -hmm. se, but they do try to do certain things in the school, like ukulele, for mm -hmm. instance, you know, uh, and um, teaching some different instruments. But I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to, to that, but I think it's very, very important for, for music to be in the schools, education at all levels, you know, mm -hmm. from elementary, middle, and high school. It's, it's just such an important thing. And occasionally we get to play, you know, demonstrate. I, I know we did it at Kamehameha um, a couple of years ago where my quartet actually played uh, for some of the students there. And they have, they have uh, different ones that do go to the schools. But they really, they really should have, you know, like Moana Lua uh, Public School that has a really fine orchestra program uh, mm. in the middle school as well as the high school. Um, so that's a great model for, for the public schools. And it's just, it's just such an important culture, yes. cultural thing, and it's just so yes. important. Yes, that's, that's, that's one thing that I'm working to do, trying to figure it out, is how we can get it back into schools. Because I know growing yeah. up, um, if I didn't have music, you know, I, I did other things, sports and everything else, but music was my love, yeah. was my love. 
Is there anyone that you would like to collaborate with? Are there any artists that you would like to collaborate with? You mean here or worldwide? Uh, or? I want to know here. <laughs> okay, I, mean, I tell you what. You give, me, you give me a few here, and you give me some worldwide. You tell me. You tell me. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's really, there's, there's so many, because um, in all genres of music, you know, there's, there's ways to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, like I'll, uh, I play sometimes with Teresa Bright, actually mm -hmm. weekly, and um, she's been talking to me about doing something with our quartet. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. Um, we actually recorded a tune that uh, Keola Beamer wrote called old, Re Real Old Style. And, you know, to collaborate with him would be great. Uh, do something there. There's this is it's just endless. I mean, looking at uh, the great musicians, Chick Corea. Chick Corea. <laughs> <laughs> and he was here. He was yeah, here what, right. about a couple months ago, like yeah. last last year, a couple months ago. But he was here. Did you did yeah. you meet? I didn't actually meet him, but I did come to the show because I know uh, the bassist uh, Eddie Gomez. Okay. He's one of my heroes. You know. Okay. But I did get to talk to Eddie. <laughs> so hey, let me, let me, uh, can he play with us one time, Eddie? <laughs> See, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Are there any, any new projects for the Honolulu Jazz Quartet? You know, right now we've, we've kind of going through, a, I don't want to say revival, but it's like um, I got new life in myself <laughs> because uh -huh. after, you know, when my mother passed away back in 2008, you know, she was the one that inspired me to have the group. And I just didn't really write anything after she passed away. I just kind of, you know. But I got, um, I visited my brother, Nick, uh, in San Francisco just about six months ago mm -hmm. with my son, Kainalu. And um, I got to hear, well, when I was there, I was looking at what's in town because it's, you know, San Francisco has some great jazz. And... My friend Robin Eubanks, who's an incredible trombone player, we played on Broadway together. Mm. Uh, he plays with the SF Jazz Collective, San Francisco Jazz Collective. And they were playing. So I said, oh, let's go, let's go. So my, my son, who's actually a punk rocker, <laughs> <laughs> but of course he grew up hearing jazz. Mm -hmm. But um, we went to the show and both of us were just blown away. And what, what was so interesting about the group is like a 10-piece group, I believe, but their arrangements are so interesting, so different mm -hmm. from what I've heard. You know, um, they'll just do a song and they'll just make it so interesting with the tempos and the keys and they keep changing keys and they keep doing it. And I really was inspired by that. And at that time, they did their own music and they were also featuring the music of Antonio Carlos Jobim. But totally different, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like what you hear. But, you know, you hear the melody. So that just inspired me finally after over 10 years of not doing anything, um, you know, new stuff. It really inspired me to talk to my group. And so I talked to Dan, Tim, and Noel. And I said, you know, what do you think of this? I had them listen, watch uh, YouTube of, of SF Jazz Collective. And they said, yeah, this is cool. You know, so I said, yeah, why don't, why don't we all do some arrangements? Ah. Yeah. And so we used Gershwin as, as a feature, but we did some arrangements of our own things, too, and standards. And that's what we're going to feature at Medici's uh, next week, Saturday. Oh, yeah. okay. I will be yeah. there. Great. <laughs> I will be there. That'll be great. Looking forward to it. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing, hearing the group, and I'm glad that you took that trip mm -hmm. to... To enlighten you, to, to wake you up, <laughs> it did. to get it back like, into whoa. doing something. Yeah, it was so inspiring. I, I haven't been inspired like that in a long time. <laughs> nice. And I, I said, yeah. And Bobby Hutcherson, the, the great vibe player who uh, passed away not long ago, he said, you know, you don't have to play standards the way they, they've always been played. He said, you know, you've known them for many years and you've changed. Mm -hmm. So why can't you play it a different way? Right. How you feel. Right. So, ah, yeah, you know, because I've pretty much been a traditionalist, and yeah, I like to play So What, how it's always been played, mm -hmm. da -do, da -do, da -do, you know, but it doesn't have to be played. We can make you can new make arrangements. Your, you can make it your new arrangement and make it your own. That's right. That's you can right. make it your own. Yeah. Well, 
John, I thank you so much for, for joining us here. Thank you. At the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Collection, Smooth, Smooth Jazz Connection. It's been, it's been my pleasure, because this is my first time actually sitting down talking to you. So this, is, this was a treat for me. Um, and to learn about the Honolulu Jazz Quartet, that's, that's another treat. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone, Medici's, the Manoa, Manoa, Manoa Theater, Dallas. and Blue Note Hawaii. Check out John Calivas and the Honolulu Jazz Quartet. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. It's been a privilege. Thank you for asking me to oh, be no. here. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. It. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on the show. We will be back next week when we will have Mr. DeShannon Higa next week. And you might have a surprise guest. Until next week, aloha and God bless. <laughs>